one of the headlines on one of the uh, news websites I saw this morning was Romney doubles down on welfare to work uh, claim. Uh, the the Romney uh, campaign and the uh, and Karl Rove's organization, which is spending hundreds of millions of dollars in television ads, they're continuing to run ads saying that President Obama took money out of Medicare and he's going to hurt your Medicare, and that uh, President Obama, you know, did away with the work the welfare to work requirement. Uh, these things that are clearly lies that Bill Clinton just laid out as lies last night. Do you think that that big lie strategy is going to work? I think not, uh, unless uh, unless it's just backed up by so many hundreds of millions of dollars uh, uh, and multiples of what's spent to tell the truth, then it conceivably could work, but I think it's highly unlikely. I think we'll see also whether the press does its job of pointing out when things are just straight untruths. Uh, you know, as Pat Moynihan used to say, everyone's entitled to his own opinions, but not to his own facts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, the, the difference between the Democratic Convention and the Republican Convention. It seemed to me that the Republican Convention, the, most of the passion was hating Obama, and most of the speeches were people talking about themselves and how great they were and how what, what wonderful things that they'd done with their lives and their careers and, and their states. And, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, tacked on to the very end, almost as an afterthought, vote for Romney. And uh, first of all, is, am I just seeing this through a complete, you know, filter, or do you agree with that characterization? And if so, how would you contrast that to what's going on at the DNC? Well, you have several characterizations there. I certainly think there was a lot of, of rhetoric about how uh, I love my mother and I love my father and my wife and uh, my kids and we're, we're a nice family and uh, uh, my grandparents had a hard scrabble existence and I'm the first or second generation who went to college and all of that. All of which maybe I'm sure is true. And, the, and President Clinton said, "Well, grant all that. Uh, they love their parents, etc. But of, of how much relevance is that to the problems that we have to solve? Right. Uh, it doesn't tell us much about what you're going to do about jobs or anything else. Uh, secondly, uh, it is true for for a number of those speeches, not all of them, that Romney seemed an afterthought. I mean, Governor Christie was promoting himself for, for I suppose the presidential nomination four years from now, and so are a number of the other people. And we haven't seen much of that or any of that, as far as I can tell, here." Uh, but the other thing was that there were no specifics. The entire Republican convention can be summed up, in a, in a, and the entire Romney campaign, for that matter, in a couple of sentences. Things aren't good. High, uh, the unemployment is still high. It's the president's fault. Why? Because he's there. Uh, I'll fix it. I won't tell you what I'll do to fix it. I won't tell you what he hasn't done right to fix it. Uh, and uh, uh, I've got this magical solution, which I won't share with you and vote for me because I, I showed at Bain that, 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 that I know how to create jobs. You know, Richard Nixon actually won an election on that, you know, on his secret plan to end the war in Vietnam. Yes, he did, but I think that uh, uh, Hubert Humphrey wasn't willing to state what he would do, yeah. which is not the case this year. Well, I he was, it, he had actually, uh, LBJ had actually negotiated a peace, and the Nixon campaign, well, we know you know, went yeah. in there and sabotaged that, and we've just learned that in the last year that they've released those tapes of LBJ talking to Everett Dirksen and saying, you know, we got the CIA wiretaps on this, and this is treason, Everett. Uh, and Everett Dirksen saying, yes, it is treason, and I'll try to get Richard Nixon to stop it. And he didn't. He was unsuccessful, and LBJ took that secret to his grave. But, but we digress. Um, <laughs> we're talking with Congress. But that, but that treason cost the lives of another 20 or 25,000 American troops. You're absolutely right. And we should not make light of it. Yes, no, we shouldn't, and, and we should never forget it either. I, I play that tape of LBJ talking to uh, Dirksen frequently on this program. Uh, it's just, uh, it, uh, I, you know, it, it's just incredible. And so, uh, you're, what, are the th what are the policy things? You pointed out that the Republican convention was short on policy. The Democratic convention, it's been policy all over the place. What are the things that are really pulling your chain? What are the things that are really getting you excited? Well, a lot of things are getting me excited, in particular that we, ha we have a, a choice, we have a, a number of choices here. Um, do we uh, uh, go on a, con do, do we do something to break what's been going on for a long time now? Namely, that wealth is increasingly concentrated in very few hands at the top of the ladder, uh, uh, and that the middle class is being shredded. And, and that's not the, and to talk about that is not class warfare. The fact of the matter is, that, that's, that there are policies, our tax system aids and abets that, our, uh, many things that, we, that, that the government does or doesn't do aids and abets that, that situation. 
we have to reform our tax system uh, so that people who are earning millions of dollars are paying more taxes and a higher rate of taxes than their secretaries. That's the, the, the least we can do, and the president uh, keeps saying that. And of course, Romney and Ryan want to do the, exactly the opposite. Uh, if you take their tax plan, then a millionaire will be paying 250, or someone who makes $3 million will be paying $250,000 less a year in taxes. And middle class people, uh, either, as, the, as President Clinton said, middle class people have about $2,000 more in taxes, or uh, you'll just uh, triple the, the, the deficit on an annual basis. Right. Um, secondly, how do we generate jobs? Now, there, there's only one real way to generate the jobs, and we started doing it. You know, when the president took office, we were losing 780,000 jobs a month. We lost 800,000 in January of 2009. We passed, the Congress, the Democratic Congress passed it, the president's push urging, uh, the stimulus bill, the American Recovery Act, which provided money for, 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 for uh, infrastructure and, and, and provided money for the state so that they wouldn't lay off uh, cops and firefighters and teachers and wouldn't not hire the private company to fill the potholes and, did, and, and, and cut taxes on the middle class and, and low income people and, we, and, and they saved the auto industry and the results of those two things um, um, were that within a year he turned it around. Instead of, uh, by, by the beginning of 2010, instead of losing uh, 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 750,000 jobs a month, we were gaining 250,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Turned it around by a million jobs a month turnaround. Then the president suggested and said, look, in order to keep this recovery going at an increasing pace, so we're gaining 250 and 300,000 jobs a month and start, start whittling down the unemployment, which is high because of the catastrophe that we inherited, uh, we have to have the American Jobs Act to continue what we, we started doing. And the Republican Congress said no. And when the Republican Congress, after they were elected and said no, then you start seeing the jobs increases tailing off. Instead of 250,000, it's 160,000, 130,000. Because the Republicans in Congress stopped the president from continuing the policies which were, which were hyping the economy. Right. Uh, and, and so the real question before us, are we going to allow a Romney administration or a Republican Congress to stop and to continue stopping uh, the successful policy that was reversing the economic catastrophe, uh, or are we going to let the, the President uh, Obama, re-elect President Obama and a Democratic Congress, which will allow that, uh, the resumption of that policy to invest in people, to invest in the country, so that, so that uh, uh, prosperity trickles up, not down. That's the now, only way you can now, do it. Grover Norquist told the Financial Times earlier this week that if the Republicans take the uh, White House and the Senate, that their strategy is going to be to pass every single piece of legislation that they want to get done, even stuff like abortion legislation, via reconciliation. They'll attach it all to budget bills so it'll be passed on a 10-year basis via reconciliation and it can't be filibustered by the Democrats. Um, we have just a minute left here, sir, but um, I'm curious your thoughts on if the Democrats take the House back and President Obama holds on to the White House, might that be a strategy to get some of these things like the American Jobs Act passed to make them budget bills rather than, you know, which are not subject to the filibuster rather than standalone pieces of legislation? Well, it certainly is a strategy. I would hope that what we would do is eliminate the filibuster in the Senate, but I'm not a senator. So my opinion doesn't count that much. But I would hope we would eliminate the filibuster, but failing, because it's undemocratic in the extreme, but failing that, uh, yes, we should expand the use of the reconciliation. And remember how, how uh, solidly uh, uh, the Republicans, uh, how viciously, I should say, the Republicans assailed the use of reconciliation for parts of the American Recovery Act, right. uh, for parts of the... Uh, of, of, of the Medical Act. Of, right, of, the, Ameri of, the, the, the Affordable Care Act. Right. The Affordable Care Act. And now they're talking about using it for everything. We should do that. Yeah, that's how they passed the Bush tax cuts, too. They were passed by reconciliation. Yes. But reconciliation so. simply, if it, to the extent it eliminates the Senate filibuster, is a legitimate tool uh, for budget bills and for things that affect the budget. There you go. Congressman Gerald Nadler of New York, thank you so much for being with us, sir. It's a pleasure.